Hey folks, I wanted to share a couple of projects using Carbide Create's Stingray Cutter. Both of these projects fall outside the norms for CNC and they involve large frame canvas painting and t-shirts. Sound intriguing? Well, let's explore some of the fun uses of the Carbide Create Stingray. The Stingray is a drag knife cutter, similar to what cricket cutters use. For those of you unfamiliar, the drag knife is a free rotating cutter with a tiny razor tip. It's useful for cutting thin material like mylar, paper, craft foam, or veneer. Unlike traditional CNC cutters, the drag knife doesn't use the rotation of the spindle to cut. Instead, the cutter is dragged along the surface, and as it moves, it turns to present the cutting edge in the direction that it's being dragged. The tip is spring-loaded, so it maintains a fairly consistent pressure on the surface. This means we don't have any router noise or dust collection to deal with. Additionally, the cutting tips are replaceable and easy to swap in and out. Carbide Create is also smart enough to use the same replacement blades that the Cricut cutters use, so you can grab replacements from most craft stores. The Stingray isn't very expensive, currently coming in at about $45, and it basically gives you a Cricut cutter with a shapeoko sized print area. This inspired me to try a couple of large projects that I've been thinking about. The first project had to do with some laser work I had done previously with something called a mandala. These are multi-layer pieces typically made out of MDF or wood. And they're painted or stained to highlight the contrast between the different layers. They're really pretty and I wanted to make something in a larger version and maybe prototype something I could sell. The drawback here is that there are a ton of tiny cuts and doing this at a large scale with say an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch bit would take a heck of a long time. So I got the idea to cut a stencil. That way instead of making just one original, I could use spray paint to create a similar mandala effect on canvas. I bought a roll of thin mylar on Amazon and set up the stingray for a few test runs quickly figured out I was missing one last piece to make this work, a cutting mat. The Cricut users will be familiar with these. These are sometimes called a self-healing or a craft mat. They're designed to keep the material from moving around when it's cut. On the CNC we're used to clamps and double-sided tape for work holding, but it's kind of impractical for thin materials like mylar or paper. The cutting mat can be sprayed with a very light adhesive something like the sticky stuff on a post-it note. This keeps the material from moving and you can still peel things up without destroying the thin material. Without the mat, small pieces tend to come loose and they get stuck on the tip of the cutter. <laughs> when this happens 30 minutes into a two hour cut, it can lead to some foul language. I'm not gonna go into the file creation much on this one as the files in question were an Etsy purchase. The file consisted of six individual layers that we'll need to cut out. I took the design and split the different layers out in Carbide Create using the Show Layers option under the Edit menu. The implementation is a bit clunky and I hope Carbide makes it work a little more like other design programs at some point but in this case it'll help us keep things aligned for our stencils. The plus sign adds new layers and the menu button on the right lets you edit and move things between layers. To begin with I'm going to use the menu button to hide everything but the first layer so we can set up our tool pads for it. Unlike standard CNC the drag knife means we don't need to concern ourselves with things like pockets or v-carving. We simply want to trace along our lines. This means we need to select a contour path with no offset. So I'll start by selecting my design, tool paths, contour, use selection, and we're going to set this to no offset. Now, mylar is pretty thin stuff, it comes in at about 0.017, so that's how we're going to set our depth. 
and the next thing we need to do is set up the stingray cutter in carbide create as it's probably not part of your tool library yet so click the edit button under tool then click select tool and you'll need to have your own user library here so all these are all locked and you can't modify them you'll need to put something in here and if you don't have a library just select new library and name it something um, once you've got your library here you can right click on it choose new tool and you can put this in either V mill or engraver mill it doesn't really matter I put mine in V and select your unit of measurement after some fiddling around in the forums these are the settings I chose. As you can see from the settings, we're whizzing along at 2,032 millimeters or 80 inches per minute. This would murder most end mills, but it's great for a drag knife. The other key thing is the depth per cut. I initially set this to 0.152 millimeters or about six thousandths of an inch. However, from testing, I found out it was probably better to adjust this based on the material each time I select the drag knife cutter. If you've worked with razor blades very often, you probably know that the key to accurate cuts is several shallow passes. If you press down and try and power through a cut, the blade wants to bind and turn. If you use light pressure, you can let that ridiculously sharp edge do its job. It's the same with the stingray. From my trials, I arrived at the habit of clicking Edit in the Tools section and setting the depth of cut to the material thickness divided by three. This means that the cutter will always make three shallow passes for each cut. The spring will ensure the pressure stays even and the shallow cuts allow the blade to turn freely. The stencils are cut out of 10 mil mylar and they are 30 inches square to match my canvas size. The craft mat gets a thin coat of tacket glue and once that dries the stencil gets positioned on the mat with some tape to make sure that nothing slides. The bottom left corner gets marked so you know how to align the stencils and what order they go in. Once the cut is complete you can pull up the stencil and weed out any parts that didn't cut through completely. To prep my canvas, I sprayed an initial color onto the entire surface. One of the most counterintuitive parts of this project is that the first base color actually appears like it's the top color. Because the stencils essentially mask an area of the canvas, they're placed and painted from the top layer down. Each subsequent stencil covers up the previous layer of paint and just a little more. It gives it the overall effect of intricate lines of paint. Allow each layer to dry fully. If you find the stencils are lifting, use a soft tack adhesive spray to keep them firmly against the canvas. Don't use too heavy a coat or the adhesive will pull up the paint. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with the first draft of this project, and I'll probably make a few more of these and stick them up on an Etsy shop. The second project is a similar one, but instead of a canvas, we print on a t-shirt. Instead of a mylar stencil, we create this one out of common freezer paper. And instead of paint, we're going to use bleach. The file setup is pretty similar to our previous project. The freezer paper I used was about 0.02 inches thick and I went with a cut per pass depth of 0 .007 which gives me three shallow passes. Like before we use a contour with no offset to let the blade follow our lines. Next we need to lay the freezer paper out on the cutting mat. One thing to note here is 0 .02 inches is pretty darn thin and if your waste board is not flat you'll probably notice it pretty quickly. You'll also want to make sure the freezer paper doesn't wrinkle when you tack it down to the mat. Wrinkles can catch the blade and really make a mess. Another tip is that when you put down the tacket glue and brush it around, you'll want to make sure it dries completely. It should dry clear. 
it'll still be sticky even after it dries. If the glue is still wet, the paper will bubble up and it'll stick to the mat in such a way that you can't get it up without tearing your stencil to bits. The freezer paper itself is just standard stuff, but it has different sides to it. There's a shiny side which is coated in plastic and a paper side. I typically cut with the shiny side facing upward so the glue doesn't grab the plastic, but this means I have to flip my design left to right since we'll be placing the plastic side against the t-shirt when we iron it on. You'll also need to be aware of any pieces that are cut out from the main stencil but still need to be ironed onto the shirt for the finished design. If there's not too many of them, they're pretty easy to place manually and iron in place. I use a cotton setting on the iron, placing the shiny side down, and work slowly out from the center of the design, making sure the stencil stays flat and is positioned where I want it. We just want things to adhere to the fabric so the edges of the design stay flat against the fabric. With our design in place, we want to block off any areas of the fabric that we don't want to bleach. I usually use cardboard and some weights to hold things in place. I also recommend doing this outside or somewhere with really good ventilation. Bleach fumes are evil. Additionally, don't wear any clothing or shoes that you really like. Spraying bleach is not a terribly precise thing and a change in the wind can ruin your outfit. Keep some water handy to rinse with and wear eye protection. When you're spraying this bleach, the goal is to lightly mist the fabric so it falls down over the stencil. Don't saturate the fabric or the bleach will bleed under the stencil. Move around your design to make sure each area is covered and then spray a light coat and weight. Different color shirts react differently to the bleach. Some just fade as you would expect, but I've found that dark blues and blacks tend to reveal an orange color when bleached, which is kind of cool. Once you have good coverage over the area, wait and let the bleach work. The longer you let it sit, the sharper the contrast will be. Once it reaches a point that you like, you can rinse the shirt in the sink or spray it with a hose. The paper stencil should come away fairly easily. You'll want to run the shirt through the first wash by itself. This will get rid of any excess bleach or bits of stencil that are still on there. Once the shirt is dry, the contrast really pops. I've made a few of these now and I really love the textured look that it gives. I'm also going to try some fabric paints pretty soon. I think the combination of a large workspace and the Stingray Cutter make for some really interesting project possibilities. I'd love to see what kind of things you come up with using this technique. Until then, I'll see you next time.